Good morning, ladies. Let's recap what we've done so far very quickly. We've looked at Boyle's Law, and you should all know that according to Boyle's Law, volume and pressure are inversely proportional at a constant temperature. We have also looked at Charles's Law, and according to this law, volume and temperature at constant pressure are directly proportional. That brings us to our third gas law, which is referred to as Gay-Lussac's law. And this law describes the relationship between pressure and temperature at a constant volume. And according to this law, if you had to write it down or state the law in words, this is what you would write down. The pressure of a gas is directly proportional to its temperature in Kelvin at constant volume. So once again, very important that temperature must be in Kelvin. The other important thing to remember is that for all three gas laws so far, we are always working with the same amount of gas. Okay, so for Gay-Lussac's law, an experiment to illustrate that could look something like this. So over here, we have the gas inside this flask. So it's the same amount of gas throughout the experiment. The volume stays constant. And I've got this flask in a beaker of water. I'm heating the water, so increasing the temperature. And over here, I have a pressure gauge. So as the temperature increases, I can check what happens to the pressure over here. Then a typical set of results would look something like this. So yeah, I've got temperature in degrees Celsius and I've got pressure in kilopascals. And we can clearly see as temperature increases, pressure increases, which shows us the direct proportion. And then also, because we've got temperature, we know that we have to work with temperature in Kelvin. So over here, I've got the Kelvin temperature. So I took degrees Celsius, added 273, and that gave me the Kelvin temperature. Over here in the last column, I also calculated the ratio of pressure over Kelvin temperature. So if you take 101 divided by 273, you're going to get 0, 0,37. 120 divided by 323, you're going to get 0, 0,37 and so on. And then if we plot the graphs, very similar to the previous work that we did. So on my y-axis, I've got pressure in kilopascals. On my x-axis, I've got temperature in Kelvin. I've plotted those points there and I can describe the graph as a straight line through the origin. So pressure and Kelvin temperature, I can quite clearly see the direct proportion here as described in the law. And then if I draw the graph of pressure in kilopascals, once again on my y-axis, temperature in degrees Celsius on my x-axis, and I plot those points, the graph ends up looking like that. So I'll only have this over here. Then if you ask to, you can then extend your x-axis so that you've got your negative temperature, uh, degree Celsius values. And if I extend that once again, the value there is going to be that negative 273,15 degrees um, degrees Celsius, as you can see over there. So just a reminder that it is degrees Celsius, but it's Kelvin, so not degrees Kelvin, and that Kelvin scale starts at zero. So the Kelvin scale doesn't have any negative values. You'll remember our very first lesson on um, gases, we actually said absolute zero the lowest temperature that you can get is zero Kelvin. But as we know, the degree Celsius scale, we do have negative values there. The formula that we use for Gay-Lussac's law looks like this. Pressure one divided by temperature one is equal to pressure two divided by temperature two. And 
very important. As I've already said, the temperature must be in Kelvin. And how did we get that? Similar to um, Charles's law, if this is my first set of results, so this is pressure 1 divided by temperature 1, I get 0, 0,37. This is my second set of results. So pressure 2 divided by temperature 2 is also 0, 0,37. And of course, if this is equal to this, P1 divided by T1 is going to be equal to P2 divided by T2. And that is the formula that I've got over there. Then some examples of calculations. A cylinder contains a gas at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. I've immediately worked out the Kelvin temperature. The pressure is 150 kilopascals. If the temperature of the gas is increased to 130, I've worked out the Kelvin temperature. What is the pressure going to be? It's going to look like that. I've written down the formula, substituted the values, did the calculation, got the answer. How do I know what the unit is going to be? I just checked the other pressure. It was kilopascals, and that is how I know that that answer will be kilopascals also. Here's another example. A cylinder contains a gas which has a pressure of 125 kilopascals, so there's my first pressure. At a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, I've calculated the Kelvin temperature. Find the temperature in degrees Celsius. And as I said before, this does not give us permission to use degrees Celsius in our formula. It must be Kelvin. So I'm going to get a Kelvin temperature answer and have an additional step where I work out what the degree Celsius temperature is going to be. So there are my values. In this question, I've got two pressures. So also just check kilopascals, kilopascals, yes, same unit. I've written, and if it's not, I have to convert so that it's the same. Formula written down, calculation done. I got the Kelvin temperature. And if the question didn't specify Temperature in degrees Celsius, you could stop here because you've calculated the unknown temperature. But because they ask for degrees Celsius, I took the Kelvin temperature minus 273 and that gave me the temperature in degrees Celsius. A negative value as you can see here because the Celsius scale does have negative values. Okay, then I just want to show you this as well. Now, Charles's law, as you know by now, is about volume and temperature being directly proportional. What if you had to explain this using the kinetic theory? That is what I want you to look at now. So, imagine we've got two containers and I've got the same amount of gas. Here, I've got a movable lid. So, According to Charles, if I increase the temperature, what is going to happen to the volume? The volume is going to increase because the lid can actually move up without or any of the gas escaping. That's very important. So why is the volume increasing? Now, let's look at that. So if I increase the temperature, I know that the average kinetic energy of the gas particles will increase. So that means the particles are now moving faster. Because the particles in here are moving faster, they are colliding with more force. So the increase in pressure in here as a result of the collisions with more force will result in, if the container has flexible sides, the volume of the container will increase, the, the container will expand, or yeah, the lid will move up, so the volume increases. But this will only happen until the pressure of the gas in the container is the same as the pressure outside the container. So we can still say that eventually pressure is going to be constant. So that is why we say, according to Charles, the temperature is directly proportional to the volume at constant pressure. If I compare that with Gay-Lussac's law, so this is all about temperature and pressure. So now my setup looks something like this. I've got a fixed lid 
because the volume must be kept constant. So what happens if I increase the temperature, the average kinetic energy of the gas particles will increase, so they'll move faster. I've got a fixed volume, so because the particles move faster, they will collide more. And we know that pressure is directly proportional to the number of collisions. So what happens as the temperature increases, the pressure in there will increase as well. Now, um, an application of this would be if I, if I take any aerosol can. So what happens here, the container isn't um, flexible. So if I, on an aerosol can, there's always that warning that you shouldn't heat it. And this explains why, because if I increase the temperature, what happens to the pressure of the gas inside the container, the pressure increases, but the sides of the container aren't flexible, so the volume is constant. And that is why it's so dangerous, because the pressure will increase until um, the can can't withstand the increase of pressure anymore, and of course it will explode. And then the last thing, just two questions that you can answer for me where you can practice uh, the Gay-Lussac calculations. Thank you, ladies.